Good morning. Let's confess the Word of God together. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is Lord over my family. Jesus is Lord over my nation, and Jesus is Lord over all the nations of the earth. God is pouring out His Spirit upon all flesh, and signs, wonders, and miracles are following the preaching of the Word. Today, I hear and receive the Word of God. He opens my ears to hear as the learned. With Jesus' stripes, I am healed, and Christ is made unto me wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. That is a good word, isn't it? Well, Mark eleven twenty four. we have reviewed now for a couple of weeks on the prayer of faith, the prayer of petition. And so I'm going to um, read this again. What things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. And then he says something else in verse 25. He says, and when you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone. Let me read this out of the King James. And when you stand praying, forgive if you have aught against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. So he's telling us, and notice how he puts that right after he told us how to use our faith and then how to pray the prayer of faith. And then he says, and when you stand praying, when you stand praying. So right then, you tell the Father, if you have anything against anyone, you forgive them. Why? Because faith works by love. And one of the characteristics of love is that love forgives. And this is what he tells us in uh, the epistles. He says, And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Well, how did he forgive you? He forgave you based on his love, based on his choice to forgive. He forgave you all of your iniquities and all of your transgressions. And not only that, but he remembers them no more. So we are to forgive even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven us. And that's the, that's the scriptural way to forgive. I'm going to read this in the Amplified because I love, I love the way this reads. And anytime you're having a problem, maybe um, Satan's tempting you to be in strife with someone or tempting you to be angry with someone, to um, maybe have a grudge against someone. Maybe you've had a grudge for years. Oh, it's time to let go of those grudges. Because you are born of love. If you're born of God, you're born of love. And love never takes into account an evil done to it. Now, how are we going to do that? Well, first of all, you're going to do it by putting that word in your heart, by speaking it, speaking the truth into your heart. And you say that about yourself. The love of God is shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Ghost. And because the love of God is shed abroad in my heart, I forgive even as my Father has forgiven me. And I forgive because I love. Well, I, I have to tell you, this is when I first started hearing this. I didn't forgive because I loved. I forgave simply because the Word said to forgive. And I would tell Frank, I would say, I forgive you because the word says to forgive you or more more importantly I would ask for forgiveness 
when I had done something and I knew had done some, I had done something because that was more often than me having to forgive him. But uh, I would, if I snapped at him or if I um, said or did something that wasn't right, I would go to him and I would say, will you forgive me? And it wasn't, it was more because the word said to, and I knew I had to, than it was out of love. But you know, the more you practice, the more you do, then it just begins to flow out of you because it is the word of God. So let me read this to you in the Amplified. And when you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone drop it leave it and let it go that your father which is in heaven may forgive your trespasses and drop them leave them and let them go and i've likened it to say if a person maybe a child which this will never happen to any of us but if a child was picking up a snake, a harmful snake, and you would say, drop it, leave it, let it go. Well, that's how deadly unforgiveness is to our spirit man and to our faith is, is poisonous to us. It will literally choke the word in you. So when you stand praying, you know, and if you need to, like, to begin with, I had to go to the Father and say, Father, is there anyone in my heart that I'm harboring anything against? Please show me, because the Holy Spirit searches all hearts. But you have to ask Him for that, and out of an honest and sincere heart, because you don't want to hold on to anything and give Satan a foothold. You know, even Paul said this, to whom you forgive, I forgive also, lest Satan should get an advantage of us. Well, we give Satan no place. And one way to give him no place is to walk in forgiveness with every person, no matter who it is, you forgive them. You drop it, you leave it, you let it go. You practice on it. And even on the road, if you're uh, driving and somebody cuts in front of you, well, you bless them, you forgive them, you bless them, and just ask God for their safety to get there. And then you know what? That's what will come back to you, is people will bless you if you accidentally cut in front of somebody else. It's all the law of sowing and reaping. So let me give you that again. And when you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, drop it, leave it, let it go. Forgive them, drop it, leave it, let it go. That your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive your trespasses, drop them, leave them, and let them go. And the way you do that is you simply say, Father, in Jesus' name, I forgive so-and-so of and name what they did to you. And that way, you're bringing it to light, is not able to hide and uh, bring about a grudge in your heart. And, you know, love, walking in the love of God and walking in the forgiveness of God is a choice. It's not based on your emotion at any time. It's not based on your feelings because emotions until your spirit man takes over as you um, grow up by the word and by the spirit and by acting on it then your emotions try to dictate to you the way they used to act or your feelings but love the love of God is not a feeling it is not an emotion and so you have to make the choice. I like what Brother Copeland says. It's a quality decision. A decision that you don't turn back from. 
And saints, anything God tells us to do is for our good anyway, is for our benefit. I've often said this to myself, the person that walks in love wins. And in the kingdom, that's the way it is. And that's where the arena that you want to be victorious in is walking in the realm of the spirit. So regardless of what anybody says about you, says to you, does to you, or does wrong, wrongs you in any way, our part is to love them and forgive them. And Jesus even said, if a man takes away your coat, then give him your cloak also. In other words, walking in love with a person is more uh, productive to you, more fruitful for you than it is for you to even have that coat. And Jesus loved. He loved and he forgave. And you know, just before he was put on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them because they know not what they do. Well, you can pray that for any person, whether it's a spouse, whether it's uh, an ex, whether it's uh, a child, or maybe it's a parent. You know, I thought I've done things wrong before that I didn't realize that I was hurting people, and every one of us has. So I've learned to say, Father, forgive them because they don't realize what they're doing. And you know what that does when you forgive them is it frees that person up to hear from God. I'll give you a great example of that, a great scriptural example, and that is when Stephen was being stoned, and they were laying his clothes at the feet of Saul of Tarsus, who was breathing out threatenings on the Christians. And Stephen looked up to heaven, and he said, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And because he forgave him, and who all was doing that, then that opened the door for God, for Jesus himself to appear to Saul on the road to Damascus. So your forgiveness toward other people not only affects you, it affects that other person and allows the love of God to uh, move into their life. Oh, praise God, so that they can be free because just like God so loved the world, we are born of God, and we so love the world. You know, the Word tells us, it says to love your neighbor as yourself. It also says to love the brethren. Of course, first of all, Jesus said the greatest commandment is to love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart, all of thy soul, and all of thy mind. And then he said the second commandment, was greatest next to that, love thy neighbor as thyself. But uh, in Titus, he tells us that the wives should love their husbands, love their children. And it doesn't say if your children are being blessings. We call our children blessings, right? But if they're doing things that you don't want them to do, no, it said to love them unconditionally like the Father does. Love your spouse unconditionally like your Heavenly Father loves you. That's the way that we love. It's not a worldly love. It is the spiritual force of love. In 2 Timothy 1.7, he says, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but he has given us the spirit of power, the spirit of love. That's his very own love and the spirit of a calm, well-balanced, peaceful, sound mind of self-control. So that's what the Father has given to us. Now, what is our part? Our part is to acknowledge that, to believe that word, to confess that word, so that that word becomes flesh in us. And, of course, like I said, part of love is to forgive. You forgive by choice. And... Don't let the enemy put in your mouth, I just can't forgive that person. 
saints, you can do all things through Christ which strengthens you. And no, your flesh may not want to, but your flesh is not ruling you. Your spirit man is going to rule you. You are the one that makes the choice of whether or not you let uh, your spirit man rule or whether or not you let your flesh rule. And so you choose to walk in forgiveness with every, every person. Of course, in Ephesians 5, he tells the husbands to love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. And that being that Jesus loves unconditionally, he always edifies. Frank would minister this, and he was a great example of it. But he would minister this as he saw the truth himself, that uh, Jesus edifies. He builds up the body of Christ. He never tears the body of Christ down. He always builds up with words. So husbands, build your wives up with words. You tell them what a blessing they are, how much you love them, how beautiful they are, what a great job they do. Just pick out something that they are excellent in and just tell them how much you appreciate that and just love on them. Uh, Jesus gave us gifts. So husbands, give your wife gifts. And um, of course, always forgive. So that is um, part of the, the prayer of faith very important, which every part of it is important, but to walk in forgiveness. So make the decision. I forgive um, the political parties that you don't approve of. Forgive them. Love them and forgive them. You don't have to agree with it, but you can forgive. Forgive um, maybe is social media or the news media. Father, I forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Lord, open their eyes to the truth. And in uh, Timothy, he tells Timothy, which, of course, that's to us right now, that to pray for those that are in authority over us. And uh, because God's not willing that any should perish, so he's telling us to pray for their salvation. To do that, we have to forgive. Now, I know it doesn't always come natural to some people. To me, it didn't. But I had to make a choice based only on God's word. So you make that same choice. I forgive. And start saying that. If you don't feel like you can forgive and forgive from your heart, just start saying, Father, I make a choice to forgive. I forgive by faith because it's what I choose to do. Well, remember all day, Jesus is Lord. Thank God for his word and thank God his word is truth and his word works.